What's up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of That Savage Kitchen. As you can see, we're going to be making some homemade style bread. And trust me, after this recipe, you will stop going to the store for your bread. So if y'all ready to make some bread, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video, get your aprons ready, and let's get started. Now, here are all the ingredients you're going to need. It's so simple, my guy. Bro, if you never made bread before, it is the best. <laughs> I, that's all I got to tell you. You got to try this recipe out. But first we wanna start off with a big measuring cup. Now I'm gonna add 3 fourths cup of milk, whole milk, and then I'm gonna add half a cup of some warm water and some warm milk. Make sure both of them are warm because we're about to add our yeast so we can bloom it. Make sure it's a temperature between 105 to 110. Any higher will kill the bacteria, the yeast. So we're gonna add all of our yeast and then we're gonna stir our bowl, put a lid over it or some saran wrap, temp it, Make sure it's at 105 to 110, nothing higher. And then we're gonna add some honey. This is gonna help activate the yeast. You can use honey or some sugar, it doesn't matter. After we added that, then we're gonna just make sure it gets dissolved. And it's one packet of yeast, I forgot to say that. So use one packet of yeast, that's all you need. Now we're gonna put some saran wrap and let that bloom. Put it in the corner and I'll let it bloom for 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes. You can tell when it has bloomed. Now to work on our flour mixture. I took two 1 4th cups of some flour, some bread flour, you can use AP. Then I took one tablespoon of some sugar and one teaspoon of some salt. So add that in and after 10 minutes, we're gonna add our yeast. And that's what I'm saying you could tell, like look at it, look how foamy it is. Just by looking at it, you can tell that it's ready and you can smell it. Now we're gonna add our dough hook and we're just gonna mix our dough like normal. So if you don't have a KitchenAid, you don't have to use one. You can use all this by hand, but I have a KitchenAid, so why not use it? Duh. So I took that and then we're just gonna add our dough onto a work surface and just knead it and work it like this. And if it's a little sticky, that's okay, it should be. But if it's super sticky, add a little bit of flour and you should be good. And we're just gonna form it into a ball like that. Look how beautiful that is. That's all you gotta do, man. You almost done. And this is a this is a step that you need to be closer to your homemade bread. Now, get you a bowl like this, add some oil, and then we're just gonna add our bread. And we're gonna let this rise for at least one hour or until you can tell it has doubled in size. All right, so after an hour, here's our dough. It has doubled in size as you can see, and that's what you want. Now, we're gonna have to, we're gonna sadly have to abuse it. So we have all that gas in there, so we punch it, and then that's gonna release our gas. Yes, we did all that inflating just to release our gas, but hey, don't be sad, it's okay. That's what you wanna do, that's what we need to do. Now, we're gonna add some flour, and we're gonna roll it out. So we're gonna flatten it like this, and looking at this, it reminds me of pizza, bro. You could also use this recipe to make pizza, but I also do need to make a pizza recipe. I've been wanting to make one for a while now, so hey, y'all wanna see that? Make sure y'all comment down below and tell me if y'all wanna see a pizza recipe. All right, so we're gonna roll it. Do not make it flat, like dummy flat. Don't make it super flat. We just wanna make it where we can make it to like a rectangle so it can fit in our bread loaf. So after that, here's the technique. We're gonna take the end of it, we're gonna fold it tightly, and we're gonna nudge it, like push it inward, like that. So keep rolling it, push it, roll it, push it, roll it, and push it in. And it's gonna look like a croissant. And if it does, that's how you know you did it correctly. So we're gonna take our edges, we're gonna nudge it in, and we're just gonna pinch the top into the dough and make it look clean and we're just gonna fix our edges. So I took both of my corners and I pulled them inward like this. So when it bakes, it has a round edge to it and a clean edge. And then like I said, just pinch it. So you can do it like this. This is the easiest way I feel like it is. And I just cleaned out the edges and it should look like that. Now get some oil, any type of oil of your choice and spray your bread loaf. After that, just drop your bread into the loaf and yo, that's it. We gotta let our loaf rise again. So I took me some saran wrap and I added some cooking oil, some canola oil on top. This helps the dough from sticking to the saran wrap. And when the dough starts to rise, the saran wrap will start to rise. So we won't have to let this rest for another hour like the first step and we'll be back. All right, you guys, as you can see, he has doubled in size and I let it rest for an hour. Yo, when I tell y'all that dough yeast just hit me in the face when I took that saran wrap off, it was wonderful, but. All right, so enough rambling. Let's get this thing in the oven. Have your oven at a temperature of 350 and we're gonna put our dough in there for 20 minutes. Make sure you keep checking on it and make sure that it's not burning. And we wanna make sure our dough reaches an internal temperature of 190. 
All right, so after 20 minutes, it should look like this. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, man. Man, it smells like a bakery up in this kitchen. It smells so good. You can smell the yeast from the dough and your dough should look like this, bro. After making this bread, Panera Bread's gonna hit you up for a lawsuit because yo, this is some high quality bread and it's delicious. So make sure y'all make this recipe. I attempted to make sure it reached 190 and it hit 190 on the dot, which was crazy. Now, we're gonna top it off with some butter. You cannot go wrong with butter. And you see the butter melting on the side because of how hot it is. But we're gonna let this bread sit for at least 20 minutes so we know everything's cooled down. And now, there it is. That is how you make bread, that's simple. But I have a few plans. We're gonna have to cut into it. And trust me, bro, when I tell you that this bread, bro, it is so moist and so soft, I am not lying. I'm being 100% with y'all. Now look at the cross section on that thing. Bro, it looks like store-bought bread, but trust me, it tastes nowhere near it. It tastes 10 times better than store-bought bread. Anything does, but that is how you make bread. And you already know we got to make a sandwich out of it. So when we think of bread, what do you think of? I think of putting some butter on that thing first and making a grilled cheese with it. So shout out to my first video. The first video I ever made was how to make a grilled cheese. I was going to show you how to make bread as the first video, but I didn't. But bro, when I tell you this is so crispy, hear this sound. Man, that thing was crisp, but look at this cheese pool. Yeah, hello. Man, I'm gonna have to open a grilled cheese shop or a bread shop or something. That's pretty smart. But we're gonna move on to a breakfast sandwich. So I took some bacon fat and I toasted my bread with it. And then I added some cheese on top you cannot go wrong with kobe jack or monterey jack but today i use kobe jack then we're gonna add our bacon slices on top and we're gonna stack them bacon pieces up like it's tetris but now we're gonna add a fried egg on top or a soft fried egg and then put your bun on top and cut it man <laughs> if y'all heard my stomach right now doing these voiceovers i am starving looking at this footage but look at that cross section mm, all that from some homemade bread but hey, thank you guys for watching. That is how you make homemade bread. Make some French toast with it, do whatever. But other than that, I'm out.